everyone, it's Tanya with Scribbles in Time, and just, just to let all of you know, <laughs> I'm having to start this video over. Um, this is a big book, and it's, it's my latest journal, so I'm wanting to do a flip through of it, but I'm not wanting this to be a forever long video, and I started the video, and I started over talking like I always do. I talk a lot because I'm so excited, <laughs> so I I let my excitement get a little bit carried away. So I was talking a lot. So I stopped the video and I'm starting over. So here we go. I'm going to try to make this a quick a quick flip through. I just don't want to leave anything out because first of all, it's just, it's hard to show everything on camera because the book is so big. So I keep finding myself wanting to lift it up so that you can see the little pieces and the little neat things a little bit better because y'all, I've loaded this book up. Um, it's first of all it's just a big book and I've loaded it full so there's just a lot to go over so I'm going to try to make it as quick as I can so let's start over so I had already measured it in the previous video um, the name of this one is called eclectic dreaming and I named it that because this is a very eclectic book there is a little bit of nature in it there's a little bit of like botanical feel to it there's just literally you name it it's in here I literally fill up a, a basket and um, like this little box and I fill it full of stuff that I want to use like this one has the little tidbits the little tiny pieces and then my box has all the papers and you know receipts and things I want to use so I literally put a little bit of everything in this book so I had already measured it I named it eclectic dreaming first of all because it is very eclectic and also I used I had gotten a um, delivery in from turquoise dreaming if you haven't, that, um, that's Sherry with Turquoise Streaming. If you haven't checked out her shop, go check her out. Because I did use a lot of items that I had just gotten in the order from her. And I've got a big order coming from Selena with a more fabric. So I'm already looking through the pictures of all of that stuff and coming up with ideas for my next one. Um, anyway, so I named it Eclectic Dreaming. And um, again, it's just very eclectic. So when you measure it, as I was stating earlier... <laughs> Um, it's very hard to measure because there's stuff poking out. So if I lay my ruler here, you'll see that with all of the items um, in the trim that's all poking out, it is around 12 inches, um, which it's hard to get all of that on camera. But it's around 12 inches. But if you only measure the hard book cover, it's about nine, um, about nine and a half. And then on the width of the book, if you only measure the hard book cover, we're at somewhere around seven maybe seven and a quarter but if we measure all the stuff poking out we're more like at about eight and then the thickness of the book I had done this um, with a two and three quarter inch spine but it, a little bit of a gator mouth so with the gator mouth we're more like at around four and a half inches of of height on this book and I say height because I consider this portion being the height I try to make my books to where they're not really made to slide into a book a book cabinet, you know, like a bookshelf because there's too much embellishments poking out on the front. So I try to make mine to sit on a coffee table and be kind of a conversation piece, a little bit of personality on a coffee table. And it's very hard to get the dimension in on, on video because on video it just more looks flat. But in person, all of this stuff that's hanging down is just... Like, you know, it's, it's personality, it's charm, it's it's something that when somebody is looking, you know, if they're sitting there on your couch and this is on the coffee table, they want to look through it. Um, it just has a lot of depth to it that's very hard to pick up on camera. Um, but if you're looking at it from the side, this is what it looks like. From the top, it's like this. Obviously, the front we've already looked at. <laughs> and then the bottom. The spine. says flora right there and then the back is just grungy um, it does have little corner protectors on it the spine has um, these straps that come across they're really not holding the spine on um, I, I made the spine I made the entire book um, using some old book covers um, but I couldn't use the original spines because they were too narrow. These were very skinny books, and obviously I made a fat one. So um, the straps are not really serving a purpose other than for visual. And um, this is a tab that I put on the book myself. 
and um, I didn't put like the title of the book on there. I just put flora with some date stamps and stuff like that on there. On the front of the cover, again, I'm going to pick the book up because I want you to be able to see all of it. But um, there's like these painted flowers with this gold around it. And um, there's also some black mixed in there. There's these two book covers here. And again, if you've watched any of my previous videos, y'all probably have seen before that I like doing this style where this is one book, but it's really two books in one. There's a junk journal here, and then there's an art journal in the back portion. And the art journal is for sketching and painting and collaging and all that kind of stuff, which I did a fair amount of in this book. Um, and then the front is more for your junk journaling, um, although you can still collage and sketch and paint in that as well. Um, there's just all kind of layering here. So this is the junk journal portion that's poking out of the side. So there's a hard surface here, and then there's a book cover and a book cover with all kind of layering and grunging. And this is some beautiful old lace. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a portion of the spine, the original spine of the book. And I like the way it had that red. I didn't do that. It had the red on it. And I like the way it just kind of, of course, this is more of a orangey, rusty orange. But I just liked it, the way these colors all kind of pull the eye. So there's a little piece of upholstery fabric here. And so it's hard to see on camera, but in person, this just all kind of draws the eye. So that was kind of the purpose of that. There's a little piece of old recipe. There's um, paper. This is some kind of like a pattern label. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. This, this metal, um, uh -oh, metal, um, I call them a locker plate. I read some kind of a metal uh, number. I layered on top of this old wood. Uh, this, I think, came off of some old furniture um, or out of a cigar box. I think it came out of a cigar, cigar box. That's what it was. And, um, it's just this old wood, and I snapped off some of that and layered it behind this metal plate right there. And that's pretty much everything on the front. I don't feel like it is. <laughs> it messes me up when I have to start a video over. Um, okay, so let me move forward. So when you flip it open, it looks like this. It is centered. That was the other thing. On the other video, I was not centered. <laughs> and that's frustrating me, too, because I don't like to stop and look at my camera I get so caught up in looking at the book that I forget to look at the camera so um anyway the junk journal portion is here as I just said and the art journal portion is here so we're going to start first with the junk journal portion and this junk journal is a full rather embellished junk journal and it is made out of this book that says this is our parish and it's got a little corner protectors on it as well and um, I don't know what year this book was, but it's, it's old. I can't remember what year it was. The spines of the books, I, I wasn't able to use. I said that, but um, so when you flip the book open, let me get it centered. This is some beautiful old uh, material. I don't, I guess you would call this kind of a, a lace with, Y'all know I'm not good with fabrics. I'm so sorry, but it is just beautiful. And there's like a little piece of cotton coming off of it. So I'm thinking this must have been trim on like an apron or something. Um, but I put that there. And then this is an old book page. And um, it's not brittle. It's actually a good page. And it just has a cool look about it. It has this man's picture on the back. And before I lay it down, I wanted to just kind of show you it has a fabric. I put this fabric tab there and it says scribbles in time and the whole concept of the name of, of my um, shop is scribbles in time because I like to visualize a timeline I think a, each of our lives I've, if you've ever heard that saying about it's all about the dash talking about what we do in between our date of birth and our date of death it's all about the dash well I think of it as a timeline so to me when you're doing journaling you kind of scribbling down notes about what's going on in your timeline so that's where my name came from scribbles in time and so I have these little fabric tabs that say scribbles in time on them 
and so it's very um it has a very scribbled look about it on the fabric so it blends in perfectly it doesn't pop out as being i mean you almost won't even notice it's there <laughs> but yet it's that that cool little touch um the back side of that page i had gotten these this um set from sherry of this dutch items they're like placemats and napkins so this is one of the paper napkins and it has like dutch uh, some kind of you know dutch pennsylvania dutch i'm um, saying there on the side with the people there and these little symbols it's just really cool so i layered this bridge score pad behind it because i thought the color is just kind of even though it's eclectic looking it's not the same kind of thing this is dutch and this is a bridge score pad I thought the colors tied it together and that's what I like to do um, I like to whatever page I'm on I like to try to make things coordinate especially when you're doing an eclectic journal because it's not like it's all one theme it's not one theme so every time you turn the page you just want that page to tie in to what you're seeing when you're looking at that page so in other words when I come in here to work on a book or to journal in my book I just want the pages that I see to you know coordinate so that that's my thought process if that helps at all in <laughs> inspiring y'all to do an eclectic book that's kind of my thought process and down the side of this page is some beautiful crochet trim a postage stamp here this is a musical page it says peace be still and it's out of an old hymnal and then i've put one of these metal tabs on that that's just got a bunch of little pieces of tidbits of paper clipped on there and truthfully I, I would probably move that up but for this video I wanted y'all to be able to see the name of the song um and what the music paper said and the music paper I didn't say this in this video I said it in the last one but this journal has um 80 surfaces and they're not all writing surfaces because to me I don't consider this a writing surface um you can definitely like watercolor on top of this or you can watercolor on top of the book page and the stuff still shows through your watercolors or you can even attach a piece of paper here and then use this as a writing surface but there's 80 surfaces in it that can be used to glue stuff on to watercolor on or to journal on so um it's two signatures by the way and then this is a tab with four little buttons my friend Dee gave to me and then this is a Japanese and English um, paper. And I use this little tab here. Let me see if I can. So I have this roll, uh, this really pretty um, trim. And I cut off just a little piece of it and use it as a little tab up here. And again, I was just trying to tie that red in that was kind of popping on the other pages I just try to pull that together with this little bit of trim so I use that as a little tab there and that's about as far as I got on my first video so I don't think I went any faster this time oh man anyway okay so this is the center of the first signature of this junk journal in the center is the piece of cotton and the bell and these hang down from the bottom so that when this is closed and then the entire book is closed those kind of hang out there as really cool charms from the front view of the book and then um, I also had this really cool um, old inset book that had I don't know what year it is and I don't have it right here with me oh no, I have the bird one. I also got a bird one. The bird one came in a box. I'll hold it up so that you can see it in case you want to look for one. It's just a really beautiful book. I don't think I used any of the bird pages, and I might have used one. I can't remember now. I've been working on this book for quite a while. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this. And I have an insect one. The insect one did not come in the box, so and I don't know where it's at, but anyway it's an old inset book that has these beautiful illustrations in it i love these they're just so they're just they're beautiful to me this lace here 
Oh, this side is just, can you see it? My lighting is not great. It's like I have more sun coming in through one window than the other. This is the piece of the paper from that spine that I used right here. It had paper on it, and I, I showed you the red line there. It had like a black line on it too, and I just couldn't throw it away. <laughs> so I stuck it here as a tab on this page. To me, that's just part of this the history of the items in this book, and I just could not bring myself to throw it away. Let's get everything over. Music paper, and this is some really, uh, this is brown trim, and it's probably not showing on camera very well, but it's very, um, let me see if I can kind of show you from the side. It's almost like bundled up nylon that's woven around on the center of this brown and then stitch down and so it has like this raised area on it it's just but the raised area doesn't feel it feels like like a nylon very cool this page i put this vintage cigar label and then here is just a, a tab a, um, label off of something i want to think that i don't know what that came off of but it's a label off of something and it's Got the red, and I just like, and then it has this blue stamping here. So I just like the way the blue and blue, and then the red and red. The other side of that book page. I don't know where this label came from. It also came on a packaging. Probably something I ordered on Etsy. I can't remember, but anyway, I used that label. It has like a plastic backing on it. So I used it there. This is the other side of that old material and then this is an old piece of crochet that I used to wrap the second signature and so we're now going to move into the second signature here is a photo out of the um, Yellowstone National Park it's like one of those photo books so each side has like a photo and I love 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 this photo this bear I think it's so cool and I love this real master pocket behind it I just like the look and I don't know if you can tell, but like the green trees here, this has the leaves here um, further back that is showing. And I just love the way the eyes are drawn to all the different, you know, layers. The Viewmaster pocket. So I love using these as pockets. If you haven't heard me say this before, though, I struggle with attaching these to a page because to me the back is so cool and the front is so cool. You can slide something in here that has an image to show through. I did not do that. I wanted more of a, I can't explain it, but I just wanted more of a vintage -y feel. But you can certainly make a tag or even use this and put a picture there or a stamp. Anything like that. A stamp is probably more of my style of what I would do if, it, if I were keeping the book. I'd probably put a stamp there um, or just writing. All right, my fingers aren't going to cooperate. There we go. Um, but because I have a hard time attaching this to the page and covering this up, I just kind of um, tipped it in like this so that both sides could be seen. Whoever, you know, gets the book could always add glue along these two edges and then have a top loading pocket as well if they choose. But I personally like it like this. Um, the next page is just some graph paper and then this cool dictionary page and it has those little indentions, the little finger taps right there on the edges of the pages. Some more of the coffee style, um, dyed paper. Um, polka dot vintage, um, the vintage, uh, saying it backwards, vintage polka dot shop. Really cool paper. She's She does an amazing job. This is another one of the Dutch napkins and it just has all kind of little sayings, um, you know, drink up, you're behind, and just different little quotes going all over it. Um, what does that say? Oh, it says, drink your glass empty again or something. This is the page that had the, uh, I've got a little bit of glue right there. This is the page that had the leaves coming down. They were poking out like that. Some pretty leaf leaves. And this is an old guest check. And it's actually a, um, a, a duplicate. Let's see, it's got two parts. It's perforated up here and the perforation didn't like tear completely off but this top layer came away from the bottom layer so I just used a rusty paper clip and clipped it together 
and there's a really neat picture on the back. This came from um, Sherry with Turquoise Dreaming. She had these in her shop. And then this beautiful trim here. Look at that. That's one of those pieces that shows shows when the book is closed. Like that. It's a kind of a layered look with that and that. Um, this is a, another piece of the, um, the book. that is that, This one is English and French. The other one had been English and Japanese. This is a um, a map, a, a page out of a map book, and it really frustrated me because I'm weird about things being like upside down. I, I don't know; it messes with me. But um, this was one of those types of pages that when you put this side face up, the the back side's upside down. So I just kind of collaged all over this to kind of disguise that, just because it it bothers me. I don't know why. Um, I see other people do it all the time, and I think it looks cool in their books, but when I'm doing one, I just, I can't do it. So anyway, I put pockets here on the center, um, and this is all collaged here, and then over, and then this is collaged on the back where the upside down map is, and then I put an index thing there and this old promise, promissory note, and I like the way the red and the red, so... With that and then over here is um, draw something and I did some sketching in the art section of this book so I just thought this was so appropriate um, I did also do a little bit of painting but it's just kind of a um, again kind of an eclectic kind of painting but I did do a lot of drawing in this so I, I put this card in here because I thought it was so appropriate it says draw something so there we go oh and then this is the center of the next journal and there's also the piece of cotton there. And this is where that little bundle of twigs is um, sewn in. So that's there. And then this has the cigar band on it. Then the other side of the desk. This is um, an old envelope from the early 80s, I believe. And I put this tag from my friend D. Um, she made these tags and gave me some of them. And so, I just wanted to kind of pay tribute to her. <laughs> Plus, I just thought the ink, I thought, I don't know, I just love the way this looked. So anyway, this is an old tag that my friend Dee made. And then, you flip the envelope, the next page, I just put a, a bingo card here. This came from um, Selena over with Amore Fabrics with a rusty paper clip. And then this is the other side of that Dutch napkin. Um... And it just has some kind of writing up here. It's Dutch, so I'm, it, or it's a combination of Dutch, and I'm not going to attempt to read that. But anyway, um, it has the little um, people on that. And then on this page, I have some pretty trim coming down there. Let me shut my door. There's barking in the background. Right now they're going to be right outside the window. I shut the door and now they're outside the window. <laughs> Great. So, um, the dictionary page here, again with the little finger tabs and then a stamp, a po old postage stamp there. And then um, a, like a little score, piece of a score pad is um, attached on with a rusty paper clip. And then this trim here I just thought went perfect. It's here on the end of the junk journal. Um, and I just thought it went perfect with, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the layout view right here. And then um, this plant, again, I thought it went perfect with, with the back of the book. This is the back of the junk journal, and it is attached in to the overall book. And this is the back piece of that pretty crochet. Um, this is some kind of, it's like a... Um, card about plants. I have a whole stack of them. Um, I believe I also got these from Sherry and um, I used one of them in this book. Okay, so that covers the junk journal. Oh, and I do want to mention, you'll see it when I get farther back, but I did make a, um, I call them press boards. Let me see, here it is here. And I used this, um, this was a cookbook, well it was kind of a variety book it's old and I got this from Sherry 
but um, it says a, a household digest so it had all kind of household tips the back of it had advertising on it and I absolutely loved the cover but it was a paper cover so I laminated it and I thought it would make a good press board for putting you know behind your pages if you want a journal you can put that there to press down on so that the you know little pieces and embellishments won't get in the way of your writing so I made a little press board out of this cover and I wanted to point that out because the junk journaling portion of the book is probably the part that most people would actually write in although you can write in this portion as well but um and you can still use this as well in this portion just put it behind a page and you can paint or sketch or whatever I actually did do that on the sketch right here um so let me put that back up Now we'll get over to the art section of the book. So this is the art journal. And in the very front portion of it is this beautiful, beautiful, snag on a leaf, beautiful doily. It is so thin. Um, I wish that, try not to keep moving the book, but I wish you could see it better. It is just absolutely amazing. It's very thin, delicate, old. It just, ugh, love it. Um, and then this is a tree I sketched, and it's funny because I've done different um, work in here, and some of them say 2020, and some say 2021. Um, this was actually my first time writing the year 2021, and then further back I did um, a little bit of art, and it was my last time writing 2020, so that just, I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. So anyway, um, so I, I sketched this tree onto this paper. And I just put gesso down and then sketched the tree. And I did put a clear coat over it so that the um, charcoals wouldn't, you know, smudge or rub off. And then I wanted to frame it somehow. So I framed it with um, just a combination of items. So you'll see that there's a little bit of book pages. There's buttons. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but there's buttons. And um, rusty bolts. Another old button. There's pieces of um, faux twigs. There's another little piece of a rusty spacer. Um, there's a piece of pattern paper. Um, buttons. There's some um, fabric one size um, sizing fabric. There's another piece of rusty bolt. Um, there's an old upholstery style button, um, some black ribbon, and a little gold button, more book page. So I just framed it around with just a combination of all kind of paper. And that is what I would hope that somebody will use this book for, um, is just, you know, doing their own artwork in it. I left pages for doing artwork. Um, this one has the scribbles in time with a crocheted butterfly down here, but my hopes are that whoever would get this can either collage on all the pages, that's art also, write poetry or do sketches or paintings or whatever, just fill this book up with, with, um, art. This is string and I literally purposely put the string in here on these twigs, <laughs> Again, in person, it's just another texture. So, um, there's fabric in between the pages. I do that because sometimes with water paper, um, in case you're going to water paint, that can start to, um, it doesn't, this is watercolor, but this is mixed media paper, so it's fine to paint on and all that. But I don't ever want the creases to start to get compromised from the water or liquids or paint or anything like that. So I typically will run fabric down the centers of the pages just to give them that extra stability. The fabric is glued. You can pull it away somewhat and um, gesso and then paint. Um, you could probably even get some scissors and snip it away if that's just not your style, but that's kind of my thought process with those. And again, I love, I love that eclecticness of having the different patterns and textures. So I already pointed out the little crocheted butterfly down here. Can we see it on camera? It might not even be in view. <laughs> and then when you flip this page, um, there's a pocket. I have laminated leaves and flowers on each side here. 
And then I filled the pocket out with um, vintage ephemera. Um, this is an old check from 1965. And then this is some type of dairy receipt from like 1960. So that's tucked in. And because it's laminated, you can kind of see through it. And you can see whatever you put back there. On this side, I did the leaf laminated leaf pocket here as well. And I did this playing card that has the green. Again, I was just tying that green color in. Um, this is a journal check that I got from, um, it's an Etsy shop. Um, is it Lindsay Zinner? I can't think of her shop name. But anyway, I think she had said that her mom made these. So I got this from there. And I just thought the bird was so pretty in this with the nature. And then this is another old, um, this is a bakery receipt from 1960, I think that's a 61. So, just slide that in here. Tag with the bird and then the playing card. And the fabric coming down here has its pretty flowers on it. This is a crocheted bookmark. And I just kind of lay it there like that. And then on this page, um, I did these little, the holes in the center of the paper that's holding a little pad of our little bundle of pages and papers on each side and a pencil here that says every day is a gift. Um, and it just has all kind of different pages. I did want to show you this one. I thought of my friend Pam because she loves birds and anyway this is some type of a leer lyre bird leer bird on this page and I just thought that was so cool it's uh, some type of encyclope encyclopedia page but I just like that bird on there so I tucked it in there like that it made me think of my friend and that's always happy thoughts there's like this bridge score pad paper in here there's just different there's these Grunge up tickets, um, just different papers. I'm not going to untie it. And the twig here, and I try to keep it kind of turned that way so that it shows when the book is closed. On the other side, it's just the other bundle of pages and a pencil tucked in there. And of course, you can untie this to make it thicker and add more to it or take stuff out and then tie it tighter. It's not glued or anything like that, so you can untie it and do your own thing there. And then this is the other side of that really thin, pretty doily. And then this is a crocheted placemat, I believe. And then here is a bag. Now, again, I was going with an eclectic. Um, this has little rusty washers around it. Um, I believe those came from rust paper scissors. Um, I also put those rusty washers around these holes here to help secure them. I like doing that around the holes as a hole reinforcer, but I like it to be the grungy rest. So, um, but inside of this bag is these cool rocks in all kind of colors. I just thought that those were appropriate for this book. And then you can just pull that tight. And then this is the Dutch placemat. more of the mixed media paper for doing your own creations this is some pretty um uh sherry and turquoise streaming she um i think she has these in her shop i'm not sure but this is just real old um she does a video she had found these in a um like a consignment shop or something and um it's real thin fabric and someone had stitched on them and i love that and then I tried to tie the colors together with the orange and the blues with this cigar band. Am I in focus? So anyway, that's that. This is the other um, tree that I sketched. And this is the one I said I dated it in 2020. And that was the last time, that was the last artwork I did in 2020. And the last time I wrote out the year 2020. And so anyway, is this um, sketch I did of a tree. And then I attached a piece of bark on the side, which I just thought, and it's attached with rope. And I just thought that was fitting with it being a, a tree. 
And so you can use that as like a little page tab. Um, this signature here is where the two charms are hanging out. This came from my friend Kathleen Sunby. Um, beautiful little red bead. And then this is a, like a pearl looking bead. And I just attached those there. I thought they were very pretty up against that. And then this is the other side of that real thin old fabric. And stitched here is this red kind of a some type of symbol or pattern and this here is like this um it has like the slow stitching going across it i don't know if it was a piece of a cantha quilt but that's kind of what it looks like i believe that was probably a piece of a cantha quilt this is the other side of that placemat and i put that cigar label there and then this is a coaster it's like this it feels like cotton with paper on the back but it's this really cool coaster and then this pretty fabric here and that's like a velvet rose it's obviously you're not going to see that on camera but the rose is velvet i don't remember on the other side if there was yeah there's that's all velvet i don't know if you can see this rose up here but all that's velvet and when you turn that page you see the back part of the um placemat the crochet placemat and then this was a big napkin. And so what I did with it is I backed it with some old, like a uh, shipping paper. Except it's not shipping paper. It has these holes in it. It's like, I don't know why I want to say it's like egg crate paper. I don't really know what it is, but it's some type of paper. Maybe it is just some type of shipping paper, I guess. But I backed the napkin with that paper. So I sewed it on and then I folded up the bottom part and created these two pockets on each side. And um, in this pocket, there's an old postcard with the blues. And I thought that was really pretty there. And then this grungy guest check and then this um, receipt from 1986. And that is slid in that pocket. And then because of all the blue here, I put the blue trim coming down the edge of this page. And I just did kind of a, I shouldn't say abstract, it's just kind of a collage -y painting here. I did like collaging with book pages and stamps and um, gesso and then um, some grungy, um, and then some number stamps on here. I just did some layering and I did like watercolors there of just blue flowers and then this tab here on this page. And again, I do that mainly to demonstrate that you can paint on this paper. Obviously, I showed you you can sketch on it. <laughs> you can just collage on it. And if it's going to see a collage coming up, um, I did a big collage right here. Just trying to, again, show the different ways you can use this mixed media paper. So on this collage, I put on the bottom here, this is a really cool luggage tag. And it has weight to it, so it kind of keeps that weighted down. And it's stitched onto this stick up here. Um, the stick is um, stitched on here with this piece of muslin strip and a luggage tag to keep it weighted down. And so here is just this, um, this is an old library pocket or a piece of a library pocket. And the picture and just all kind of layering. There's um, some kind of a piece of packaging that had slots, slits and reel up through that. And then cardboard cheesecloth and the library pocket um, there was writing on the back Let's see if I can get that in frame so I left the writing and I left that just like that um, the back part of the pocket was actually torn so I couldn't have even used it as a pocket um, but I didn't want to throw it away <laughs> so I used it like that that flips up and I put this um, cabinet card out of this um, Vent the real old antique photo album I showed in an old video I did. Um, but these are some of the, this is one of the cabinet cards out of that. And that was from the 18, late 1800s. So I did that with an old photograph. That's an original photograph inside of the cabinet card. And um, I did leave this open in case you want to slide something over that, a secret note or a different photograph. But I will tell you now, this is very fragile. This is very, the, I don't think the photo is as fragile as the um, 
the photo holder that it's on, that black right there, it, it was just breaking away as I was sliding it in. So once I got it in there, there, you can see. See how it broke away right there? So yeah, once I got that in there, I'm like leaving it alone. <laughs> but, but if you want to experiment with it, you can slide that out and slide a picture and that the top is also open. And then the weight of this luggage tag kind of keeps that down so that it you know, stays in place. So that's just kind of like a little hidden picture back here. Some burlap coming down the side just for extra texture. And that is pretty much completes the flip through of the journal. This is the back part of the pocket. I already showed you the little press board. And then this is just a blank um, receipt. It is a duplicate. And that is old. I don't know how old it is. It has the 19 pre-filled for the date. So I know it's for the 1900s. If I had to guess, I'd say probably 1930s, but it could be you know, not that old. I don't know. But anyway, there's the press board. And then that pretty much completes the flip through of the journal. There's the back. Well, for anyone who hung in here with me, I really appreciate it. I'm really thrilled with this journal. I think it turned out so pretty. Um, I love it. And um, let me know if you have any questions or um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. This will be listed in my Etsy shop, which is Scribbles and Time um, on Etsy. And I really appreciate you watching and y'all have a blessed day. Love you.